Listen, the expectation around the Chicago Bears this season should be competing for the playoffs. And when you look at the teams on the schedule, not that the Bears are going to win every single game that pops up on the schedule, not that the Bears are going to go out there and dominate every single game on the schedule, not that they're going to go out there and get blown out. But when you look at the home teams and the away teams, it still feels like a very favorable schedule for the Bears. Here's your home matchup right now. Detroit, Green Bay, Minnesota, Rams, Seattle, Jacksonville, Tennessee, and New England. Out of those home games, how many of them do you think the Chicago Bears should be able to get this season? I'm going to say a majority of them. I mean, but see, I, you know. It's nine home games. Out, get, out, of nine, get, out of the nine home games, how many you got the Bears getting there? We'll get T. Te- you know, I get teased all the time because I'm the most optimistic Bears fan every year type of thing. But well, AD ain't here no more. <laughs> AD but, goes 17 to 0. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I well, what I would say is, at 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 the minimum, we should split most of these games, right? So the home, well, like in terms of playing against our division rivals. So if we could beat, I'm not scared of Minnesota because I'm not scared of Sam Darnold. Green Bay is a mental battle, but we could win that one. If you're going to win one, you would assume it would be the one at home. And Detroit. I mean, Detroit is – you could get – I'm not going to lie to you. Now, which we're never going to be favored in the Detroit matchup. Wait, which ones were the other home games? These I just listed you all the home games. I the away games, I didn't even list No, them. no, I'm sorry. I, I, clearly, the we got the division rivals. What were the other ones? Rams? Oh, the other home games. So, you got Rams, you got Seahawks, you got Jacksonville, you got Tennessee, you got Carolina, you got New England. You should beat New England. You should beat New England. You should beat Carolina. Yeah. You should beat Tennessee. Yeah. Jacksonville may be tough. Jackson? No. Why is they tough? Jacksonville because Jacksonville actually has a team put together. It, it's it, Trevor Lawrence isn't amazing, but they do have a team put together. I, I, so Jacksonville may be the tough one. You know what's crazy? Oh wow. Justin Fields never played Trevor. No. No? Oh, you mean he's never played him? Like, as a bear. Oh, no, yeah, no, we haven't played him. No. That's crazy. All we hyped up was the Justin Fields-Trevor Lawrence battle, and I don't think Justin Fields ever played him one game as a bear. I don't recall us hyping him up. What are you talking about? We never what do you mean? That. That, that's been their battle the entire life. I, Who I was know. better, Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence? I know that's followed them since high school. What I'm saying is that we never high school. They must be doing that in grade school. Okay, but my point is that I, we never that the problem was that Trevor wasn't doing that well, and Justin hasn't done that well. So no one really cared to try to even relive that. Like it's just crazy. It's it's one of those things where it was like it was this major storyline when everything started. Now it doesn't even get a chance to play out here. Um, but Jacksonville is. See, here's the tough part. One, I don't know how the schedule falls. Two, Jacksonville's beatable, but I haven't seen this iteration of the Bears on paper. So I'm going to say Jacksonville, maybe we don't end up getting that one. Seattle, maybe we don't end up getting that one. Rams, maybe we don't end up getting that one. Mm-hmm. But I actually think we could sweep the division at home this year. I don't I don't I think that it. this is your best chance to sweep the division. Detroit is it, the Bears have Detroit's number. There's something right uh, Matt Eberflus is doing mm. that has Detroit's number. I don't know what it is. And sometimes that's just a team. That's what the Bears are to the Packers right now. Yeah. Like literally, like there's no reason the Bears shouldn't have been able to beat the Packers last year. And they looked horrible in that last game of the season. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't disagree with you. I would say, let me be generous here. We'll go two out of three in the division, and we'll win three out of the six games uh, um, at home. So that gives you one, two, three, four, five, five and four record at home. Yeah. And then on the road, I think your away games are just as interesting here. I mean, of course, Detroit, and I think maybe we get probably – two of the division games on the road as well. I think the Bears are in a good position this season. Mm -hmm. So you got Detroit, Green Bay, Minnesota, of course. Then you got Cardinals, San Francisco, Houston, Indianapolis, and Washington. The road schedule is so favorable. Yeah. 
I think that you have to be thinking playoffs at a minimum. I think on the road, you take two of your division games, either Minnesota or Detroit or Green Bay, want to pick two of the three. Um, Arizona should be a dub. Arizona literally has nothing. I don't know if y'all remember us playing Arizona last year. Arizona literally has nothing. I remember talking with Ari- uh, uh, um, uh, one of the, the – I can't remember his name. He played for the Falcons, uh, uh, big name for them, tight end for them. Um, but radio host uh, for Arizona does the radio games. And I was like, how do you beat the Cardinals? He said, how do you want to beat them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I- like dog water, maybe lose to San Fran. Probably lose to San Fran, I'd say. I don't think we're there yet. Probably lose to Houston, but maybe not. And we get to see Houston in the preseason, so I don't know if that helps at all. You should beat the coach. You should beat the commanders. Well, I look at it as this defense, the cut, that defense beats bad quarterbacks. So I think it's very easy to see how many bad quarterbacks on the, are on these teams. I don't think that – I don't – we've – Based off our experience with the Lions, we could beat the Lions, and I we think, could beat the Lions twice. I think it's a mental. I think, I, I, I think it's a mental I'd, thing. With I'd say we Jordan might sweep the Lions this year, probably. But I'm saying that Jared Goff doesn't scare me. Jordan Love does not scare me. Sam Darnold does not scare me. Trevor Lawrence, I don't think is necessarily that great of a quarterback because he he fell off of a cliff. They had they start off well and then fell off. You got now now uh, C.J. Stroud is probably decent. But not necessarily a great quarterback yet. Uh, Tennessee, Will Levis is in his second year. Anthony Richardson is not proven. I'm not necessarily – are we scared of Geno Smith? Kyler Murray is dangerous because he can use his feet, but they don't have a lot of weapons. They don't have no. They got they got the the young tight end up there that's a dog. Well, and I Sam, mean, and wait, listen, they so, may so, have look, MHJ. Look, look, San Francisco is a, a good team, a great team. You know, now they'll probably be the problem. We we that's a that's but they have a shot to win. The Rams, we don't know where, how old uh, uh, Stafford is. No Aaron, no Bryce Aaron Young, Donald anymore. There's not a great either. team there. Washington has a rookie quarterback and 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 will probably have one as well as New England. Yeah, Joe, it's, you do. Jordan said, move the graphic. You got the graphic covering your eyes. Up I there. know, I see it. He wants to see your eyes there, Joe. But the point is that he wants to look you in the eye like Caleb Williams. <laughs> My stop. Just you know what? Uh, hot and ready. I'm going to be. Oh whoa, Jordan! Oh wait, whoa! Wait, wait. What are you doing, Jordan? <laughs> Calm down, Jordan. I'm sorry, what happens Jordan. when you chime in? I'm sorry, Jordan. No, but in my my point is that looking at this schedule, it these quarterbacks are not dangerous. If this defense ends up being a top five in pass defense, not not that's just already number one in rushing defense. If they end up being like top ten in pass defense. This is a scary team, and we still got a rookie quarterback that we're playing that they were using. But these quarter, nobody here is scaring. If this was, if this was Mahomes, if this was J- Josh yeah. Allen, yeah. Lamar Jackson, Burrow, uh, Tua, and we had that echelon of quarterbacks, then we got a problem. Even Herbert, we don't have anybody on this on this schedule that says yes, they're going to dominate this team. That we should be able to beat them. Most of these, we we should have a shot at each of these games. Absolutely. I mean, a shot for sure. But I, I'm sitting here saying we should be talking about the playoffs. We should be talking about winning the playoffs. We should be talking about actually being a legitimate playoff team with the schedule that is in front of us. Now, I know there's a lot that goes into it, how it lays out, different things like that, right? Um, but I'm willing to say we could sweep Detroit this year. Mm-hmm. We could split with Green Bay. I don't have. I don't think the Bears are to a point where they can sweep Green Bay yet. Um, possibly sweep Minnesota, but I'll say because I said you were going to lose one of each, maybe you split with Minnesota. Maybe I mean, we overlook them one week or something like that. They still got Justin Jefferson. Listen, it's going it, to. You're not going to get the same Sam Darnold, and they're probably going to draft the rookie QB themselves. You're gonna. Actually, I, I think you're gonna are, be facing something different. I, I think they are gonna. I think they move up in the draft and try to get and try and add a QB. They might go. It could be. That could be the JJ McCarthy situation. <laughs> might I interest you? <laughs> now hear me out, JJ McCarthy. Because you're talking J. J. McCarthy. Caleb, Jaden, and and um, Drake May. I mean, yeah, it could even be. Who knows? I mean, it could be that Penix goes there. And he's the next Warren Moon. Yeah. 
You know, when well, one Penix is, I'm not gonna lie, the health of Penix is is the biggest. They're saying he mark. is healthy. I mean, of course, they're saying he's healthy. <laughs> what, 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 would you, what would you expect them to say there, Joe? Well, no, this guy's dead. I don't know. I mean, he, he, yeah. his, heart, his elbow goes up like this. It, it works. It works. Speaking of which, the amount of people that were losing their mind at the Jaden Daniels elbow. It did look gross. I, it was AI. I'm just saying it looked gross. Yes, it looked gross. It's not how his elbow looks. I know, but that was still a ugly you know it did look bad listen y'all gotta realize we gotta be double triple quadruple checking everything we are in a world i saw a video the other day where i could have i mean if if the video didn't say this is not barack obama i wouldn't have known it wasn't barack obama Mm -hmm. and he wasn't saying nothing crazy but you know that's what's coming yeah i mean you know that's what we're going to end up having to deal with like y'all gotta you gotta be Triple, quadruple check and everything because this AI is getting crazy. The robots are coming. And it's going to be fun. I'm not going to lie. I'm indulging in the robots. <laughs> I will we probably get killed by robots. robots. Boom, 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 boom. I, I, I'll probably get killed we by a robot. I will not robots. be Spooner. All right, I mean, robot. I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, Shia LaBeouf uh, probably <laughs> in the middle of a crowd trying, hoping that I don't get killed and doing bad jobs at cursing. <laughs> Such a hilarious movie to me. <laughs> what movie was that? On I Robot. Oh, he was in that. Yeah, remember Will he Will was Smith? he was the little white kid that kept cursing poorly. Oh, I have I don't. I think I watched it one time, and that was it. I've watched I Robot probably an unhealthy amount of times. Maybe I've seen it twice. Other than that, I, I can't. I've probably watched I Robot an unhealthy amount of times. I'm not gonna lie, because it was it was in that era where like if you just had the movie, you just watched stuff, and mm-hmm. every now and then you would just have a movie night. Yeah. So, like, my parents just had iRobot. For some reason, my mom bought iRobot. I was like, you bought? Like, we getting this? Like, for real? Like, my mom was like, Disney movies or the devil. Like, you're not you're not getting the other one. Pat uh, gonna get killed by his AI side chick. Hey, listen, what a heck of a way to go. You know what I mean? What are we talking about here? Hey, look, what's she doing? Because I tell you what, what they got them robots doing in Japan right now. Anyway, so, uh, no, what I'm saying is, realistically, that I just feel that this... Uh, I, I think that it's not even maybe last year I was a little too optimistic. Although I said the Bears could be around an eight to nine win team, they end up winning seven. <laughs> you said I've watched this stupid. Oh, Patricia the pet, the designer. Oh, Jordan, Jordan, Uh-oh. you want to do this? Oh, Jordan, Uh-oh. you sure you want to do that? Fight back, fight I'm gonna back. I'm going to tell you this right now. This ain't the fight he wants. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to leave Jordan alone because <laughs> I'm going to just leave Jordan alone. I'm going to leave Jordan alone. You know what I mean? Because, listen, every time I end up frying somebody and actually going at them, they don't want to talk to me no more. I mean, <laughs> Joel's got friends that aren't my friends is all I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> <I> mean, like, <laughs> you mad at me? I'm like, I ain't do nothing. Oh, man, man, we all we all got caught up in that mess. But, no, it was uh, it was a funny joke, though. He did that to Martin Luther King mustache. But uh, I just think that, <laughs> like, when you look at this – this Bears team this season, what the, what's been built up, what's been put together, and what you're still going to add to it. I think that you look at a team that you can say, at least even defensively, the expectation should be playoffs. Defensively, your expectation should be – because and this is what I've said a couple of times. I said this on a solo uh, video I did, and, and I'll bring it to you here. When we had Briggs and Erlacher, what was our expectation of the team? Well, it was to be a 10 win team. Yeah. We knew we were going to be running the football with Matt Forte. We knew we were going to have a subpar quarterback. We knew that we were going to have some wide receivers out there that were pretty good. No, no, and every now and then they was going to cook. But I, our our expectations still were because of that defense, we can beat everybody. Well, they, yeah, they overachieved. And then with Hester, they thought the offense was finally going to click because they had waited for Rex for so many years. This team, this team, honestly, I think that the true comparison of what this team should be like is probably the Rex Ryan Jets with Mark Sanchez. Well, now that's disrespectful because Mark Sanchez is a bad quarterback. No, 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 no. I'm saying the 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 premise is a rookie quarterback with a great defense with a really good cast. Yeah, but they never had this at offense, though. No, what I'm saying is they're still nursing. We have to bring along a rookie quarterback. So the defense is Trump, like you just said. 
They had good skill. They had some good skill positions around Sanchez. Sanchez, it's not about Sanchez. Yeah. It's the fact that we had a good team. Or it's kind of like the Seattle Seahawks, the Legion of Boom with Russell Wilson. Now, Russell Wilson was a second-year quarterback when they won the championship. I'm not saying we're looking for us, for the Bears to go to no championship, but it might be either Seattle with Legion of Boom or the or the Rex Ryan type of squad. The defense is still the see. I would say Trumps. more. I would say more of that though, right? I would say more Seattle Legion of Boom because there's an offense here that should be able to hit the ground running. Again, it's very, it's going to be very difficult for Caleb to screw this up. Oh, he meant the AI girl, by the way. Sorry, <laughs> no, yeah, get out of here. I'm still friend. Wait till Monopoly. <laughs> Straight through jail, right away. But I, I think that you have to look at. You have to look at the position offensively that the Bears are in. We're not talking about a rookie quarterback coming into a tough situation where it's just not screw it up. It's like, how do you screw this up? And he's going to find ways to mess up certain moments. He's going to find ways to mess up certain games. And you know what's going to happen? You have a defense on the other side that was top of the NFL in interceptions and taking the football away. You have a defense on the other side that didn't allow a lot of teams to run the football very well. And so I think that when you look at all the things that are in place, how it's almost like as Bears fans, we're conditioned to do certain things. It's like we're finding a way to say the Bears won't make the playoffs. I'm not saying it at all. What I'm saying is my expectations are. I just think the expectation of the masses is not 10 games. My expectation of 10 games feels, that feels probably right on the money to me. 10 games is 10 like, games feels right on the money. It's respectable. It's not like, oh, yeah. But you should, because then by next year, if everything clicks, now we're talking a 13-win team, a 14-win team the year after that. This year is more like – it's probably more relative to – because 06, the Bears went to the Super Bowl, but 05, they actually went to the playoffs. You know, it's even an 85 squad. They dominated 85. 84, they were knocking on the door a little yeah. bit. So this is probably that – this should be that type of team that with this quarterback, I think he comes out and he has – three to four games because they have no tape on him. And then they get tape on him and he struggles from week five to about week 10. But see, that's that's why I said how this falls matters. Right. Well, how this playing? falls is so important. I still I think you can beat certain teams. You won't be able to beat certain teams. But right. If you go right, say we start the season off Detroit Rams, uh, Tennessee, Carolina. You're like, all right. Those are all winnable games. I can go three and one in that and feel really good about it. And then when people start to get tape on Caleb, if the next four are Arizona, Indianapolis, Washington, and New England, right? It's like, oh snap, we can go seven and one, right? Are you yes? Do they have tape on them now? Sure, they still suck. No, because the defense can get you the whole. The defense can get you should get you some uh, 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 a shorter field to start from. And then with these new kickoff rules, there might be some situations Man, where it's Vela's back, baby. I mean, you might have you might be starting in the 30, the 40, the, the 50 yard line type stuff yep. because you've eliminated that 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 uh, momentum of running down and, and tackling somebody at 20 at the 25, 20 yard line. Your average starting line of position might be a lot sooner. The new era of football is what gives us our quarterback finally because we had to be able to start at the 50 every play. <laughs> yeah, Mine, minus any type of turnovers. Yeah. And, you know, if he can make – if this guy has the ability to just make a couple reads to read a defense, then it, this could be a very scary team. We don't need – I don't think they need him – to, to go for two to 300 yards right now as a rookie. Now, if he does, it's a bonus. We just need you to not turn the ball over because yeah. the defense, the running game, and then we do have receivers that can actually get some yak if we give you the ball, if they give him the ball, which is the whole point of, of Keenan Allen. Yeah, I mean, listen, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, both signings of guys who were uh, top 15, I think both of them, in catch percentage in the uh, season last year. So you got guys that can catch the football. You got guys that, I mean, DJ Moore, as you already know what he is, he's the throw that mug wherever. As long as it's near me, I'm going to grab it. Keenan Allen, kind of the same way. I, I love how Ryan Poles talked about it. He said, we got like 1A and 1A. Like he didn't even say 1B. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, kind of. I mean, and, and the fact, it, what I love about it, too, is, it, it fe it's it's sad to say, but like we hear the report today that Keenan Allen was shocked and saddened that the Chargers traded him. 
Mm -hmm. You're usually shocked and saddened when you feel like you're still at the top of your game. So now we're getting a pissed off season with Keenan Allen. Oh yeah, I'm all in. I'm all in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm all in. I'm I'm excited about what that could end up being. Let's keep this thing moving along, man. We got to talk about this interesting PFF trade that the Chicago Bears have on the table. But first, we do want to tell you guys all about Underdog Fantasy. I want to tell you guys about the easiest way to get in on your March Madness or NBA action. It is Underdog Fantasy's Pick'em Game. All you got to do is pick higher or lower on your least or favorite players' uh, 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 stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Listen, it's the easiest way to play these fantasy sports. All you have to do is sign up right now with the code TWCB, and you can double your first deposit up to $100. So many different games. Of course, the Pick'em game, where you can win up to 100 times your money in a single night. You can pick higher or lower. You can do the pick between two and five. You can pick the Rivals game. The Rivals game is so fun dog when i tell you it's literally putting one player against another player it's all you have to do and always turning on that pick em insurance which makes your life a little bit easier gives you a little bit more wiggle room if you're not as confident in an entry so sign up now with the code twc B and you'll double your first deposit up to $100 in bonus cash when you make your first deposit of $10 or more deposit $100 and get a $100 free get your money man might get on a little underdog tonight, man. A little underdog fantasy. You can't go wrong with a little underdog fantasy, mm. man. A little, a little fun, dog. Make, makes makes the games interesting. You know what I mean? Where's Bond, son? The word is Bond, son. All right, let's keep this thing moving along, man. Appreciate y'all for tuning in and rocking with us, man. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Leave a five-star view. Y'all know what to do. So, the other thing that I want to get into with this, there was a trade that PFF pro proposed that I feel – is an interesting trade to bring to the table. They talked about trading the ninth overall pick. Brad Spielberger brought this up. We had Brad Spielberger on uh, the Chicago Bears podcast. Very good guest. Very good at, at breaking things down like this. He talked about the Bears trading the ninth overall pick and the 75th overall pick for the 14th overall pick, the 45th overall pick, which allows you to get back into some of those rounds where you feel like there was just a gap. I mean, you're talking about 9 to 75. That would be your, your uh, second first round pick and your uh, third round pick, basically. Yep. And then the 168th pick. Now, 168.